What's up guys, welcome to another episode on Proven Power Cycles. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric. I'm the tuner here at Proven Power Cycles. We got Lewis back there. We're uh, finishing up degreeing in some camshafts for the uh, shop bike for the ZX-10. I'll update you in a second. And then we got Daryl. He's bringing in some tire and wheels. And uh, actually, I'll start with this. So we have a few things kind of going on in the shop. Um, we're gonna be moving some of the machines out of here and giving us a little bit more room. So things are a little messy around the shop. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're moving stuff all over the place right now. Got some really cool changes coming to the shop. Uh, and I'll go over that here in a second as well. Uh, Daryl basically is just getting this ready. So we have a, uh, a VMAX that's gonna be coming in very soon actually. And I'm gonna be making a video on this. Uh, so look for it guys. But he just got his wheels repaired and powder coated. We helped him with part of the repair. We also sub uh, subcontracted some of this out to uh, to another friend of ours, uh, Travis Yeager over at Yeager Works. Uh, really good guy, awesome fabricator. So he helped us out. There was some damage done to the wheels. Um, he helped us out with um, basically uh, welding in, remachining some of the drill holes, uh, along with some other things on on, the, uh, on these wheels. So. What we're gonna do, we're gonna throw the tires on. He brought us uh, tires, the owner did. We're gonna throw the tires on, new bearings, throw it all together, and uh, he's gonna bring in the bike. We're actually doing a mod on it. It's an old school mod called the uh, Triple Threat Mod. And uh, basically it's an airbox mod, and believe it or not, these bikes pull some serious power, but yeah, and these things look great. Yeah, that's a cool color. He said it was called Medallion Bronze. And you wouldn't believe it, but there was a ton of damage all on these wheels. And when I say a ton of damage, I mean a ton of marring and stuff. So you can see just a little bit in the right light. You can see just a little bit right there. But honestly, when the I feel like when the tire goes there and the lip is hanging over it, you won't really notice it. But anyway, um, so we got that going on. We got the new uh, chain in. We're still waiting on the sprockets for the Busa, so shipping's taking a little while, but we're waiting on the sprockets for him. Uh, we did go and pick up part of the fuel system for our land speed bike, and uh, they didn't fulfill the whole order. It um, We didn't realize it also until we left. So uh, once we picked everything up, we realized we're missing a bunch of fittings, so they, they kind of kind of gypped us on some fittings. So we need to get back in touch with them. We need two more of these. We need two more of these. We need a whole fuel pressure regulator that they forgot to send to us. So, um, but anyway, we're gonna be redoing the fuel system. This is an AM 400 LPH pump, uh, methanol friendly, E85 friendly, basically almost everything friendly as far as fueling goes. And then we got the fuel, the little smaller uh, fuel pressure regulators. So, um, you know, and then obviously the fittings and stuff. So we're gonna be redoing the fuel system, honestly, on this bike, the LSR bike, and uh, the all-motor Busa that is outside. So we got those things going on, still waiting on parts for the MT-09. And, well, also still waiting on parts for the for the little Grom. Um, things are just kind of taking a little bit of time this week to get in, so. Uh, but we do have right now, we got a Z900 on the dyno. Um, and every day the dyno stays busy and we try to shoot at least a few of the bikes that come through here But uh, lately it, it's been really busy. So uh, we're kind of slacking on it admittedly, but We got the z900 on the dyno. It's a z900 se He's got a Olin's rear shock on it pretty dope takes it to the track This is gonna be more like a road course bike. He said he's kind of building it into that so um, and you can tell he's got He's definitely getting getting a little uh, getting a little uh, on the side there. He's getting close so it looks good. He's definitely having fun with it. He said he's going to start going a little bit more. He's enjoying it. So he said he's going to put some money into this thing and and uh, go out there and uh, try to try to do something with it. So he's got a good setup so far, you know, and he's chipping away at it. We're about to do the EC flash and dyno tune. So, you know, he's, he's getting close. Tonight, I'm also going to take the Turbo 14R to the track and uh, we're going to take it to the quarter mile and get a little bit more seat time on it. I've, uh, I've got about three good consistent passes now on it. Um, so we're gonna go to the track. We're gonna see if I'm uh, still consistent with it, see if we're still trapping around the same time. So that'll start to give me ideas now, a new baseline, if you will, as to where to take the bike next. So I already have some ideas. I just, I need money. So once we get there though, the bike's gonna have a little bit more mods in it and we'll just keep making that thing faster and faster. The goal is to eventually run in real street with that bike. So I'm gonna have to make some changes to it. And, uh, and and still, it'll be fun. I can't wait, honestly, I'm excited to do that. We got the ZX-10R. This is the motor out of my bike and uh, we are degreeing in the camshafts and we're basically, we're basically there. 
we're, we, we've got it figured out. We're basically there. We're almost done with it. So once we get done with that, it's going to go back up into my frame. And uh, we do have some cool updates coming for this bike. I cannot wait. Oh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited. I need to get the ball rolling on that though. I really do. So I'm really excited about this. Wait for the updates on this, guys. I'm trying to go through it. Um, we're we're going to try to update this thing quickly, sooner rather than later. Peekaboo. So we got another ZX10R motor. Basically, it's going to be something real similar to my motor. So we have two Gen 6 motors that we're working on right now. We have mine, and then we have this other Gen 6 motor that we're going to be working on and uh, doing another degree on that one, provided everything goes really good with mine. So fingers crossed. Hopefully we don't blow it up, right? So we'll see. I ain't gonna lie, half the time we're winging it. Huh? We'll only find out when the data. Yeah. <laughs> and if it fails, oh well, we'll do it again. <laughs> Wanna see me do it again? Wanna see me do it again? <laughs> As you can hear, we have an H2 on the dyno. Jaeger is on the dyno. Jaeger! He's on the dyno. Um, he's got a, a stage three H2. Here, I'm gonna put my, uh, let me put my ear, earphones in real quick, my little hearing protection, if you will. Uh, it's been a very, very busy week, like it has been all the last few weeks, but um, yeah, I'll show you guys real quick. We got Jaeger on the dyno with a stage three. Another little update, well not little, but another update that I've been telling you guys and I've been promising you guys uh, came to fruition today, which is we have the LSR bike back in our possession. The owner dropped it off today. He, uh, he had the frame actually welded up for the turbo kit. As you can kind of see here, we have some of the spots welded there that we can show you. Uh, there are a few other spots in there. I'll have to go check them out here later on, but um, Anyway, he did get it all welded. We gotta, we gotta clean the bike. We're gonna pressure wash, uh, well, at least this part of it. We're gonna clean it all up and uh, get it kind of ready to go for uh, for the engine and the Max ECU. Both of those are, uh, well, the engine's here and the Max ECU is on its way. Uh, it should be getting shipped out today. So the harness and ECU. So we have a, so this one's getting a custom harness from Chris over at uh, Boomstoon uh, HQ. Uh, cool guy, so can't wait to see everything, but he said he's gonna get it out today, so we'll see. We're gonna get it, start throwing everything together. And we got another one in, which is the anniversary edition. This one is going to be a super fun build because we're gonna do a little bit more than what we've done on the other ones, and we have some other parts that we're gonna test on this one, guys. Uh, so this one, I'm not gonna give away too much, but this one, we're gonna lower it. We have a full exhaust, we have the oiling mods, we have the filter, but there's an extra step that we're actually gonna do on this one. Uh, and he does have a drag tire that we're gonna throw on this, but uh, there, there is a little extra that we're gonna do on this bike that we haven't done on the other ones. So more than likely, we're gonna make another video on the 14. And you guys seem to love these 14R videos. This has got a different setup than the other ones that we've done. He's not going with a Brox exhaust. We're gonna do a different exhaust. <laughs> Uh, it should be pretty exciting. We were gonna do an MR12 tune on it, but considering what's going on with VP right now, and for those of you who don't know, VP has a pretty large recall on uh, their MR12 race gas. Uh, they're finding some issues, some contamination issues with the gas. So um, right now, basically, we are, uh, we're kind of on standby until they can get it. And for what that gentleman is racing, uh, the type of racing that he's going to be doing, they are regulating the fuel and he cannot run. So a lot of people are on this fuel factory kick right now and he can't run that fuel factory uh, fuel, which is 2WL. That's the comparison to MR12. That's the, uh, the similar version, if you will, of MR12. So uh, he cannot run that. He's got to run MR12. That's like their, uh, that's like their spec fuel. 
and uh, he's not allowed to run it. So we had two drop offs and then we had Jaeger show up basically all at the same time. Uh, we have a shit ton of work ahead of us here uh, to get through, but we love it. It's a lot of work, but we're having a lot of fun doing it, guys. Uh, and it's honestly thanks to you guys too that we're growing. Thank you guys so much. And uh, oh yeah, I just noticed that in the camera. So notice right there, right there. So, Brand so Brandon, my buddy Brandon, he uh, broke part of the mirror and it was done on purpose. I know it doesn't look like it, but it was done on purpose. We are going to start, we're gonna put an oven here. Oh, I forgot about that. That's the first bike I ever rode, little Honda CT70. I know some of you guys will love that, but sorry, ADD's kicking in. Anyway, so we're gonna start doing powder coating, guys. Um, Daryl, our uh, newest member here on the squad, on our team, he actually loves doing powder coating and he's got some knowledge on it. So we're actually gonna put an oven in right here and then we're gonna have a little booth right here and that up there is the uh, ventilation. That's gonna be the vent for the uh, oven. So that'll be the escape. So, and then we're gonna have another one over here. They're gonna put another one in over here. So. Uh, but all in all, uh, we're gonna get this all set up so we can start doing powder coating. We think it'll be a pretty cool addition. There's quite a few people that do powder coating, admittedly. On, you know, there, there is a lot of people that do powder coating around here. It's a pretty common thing, but we wanna be able to do it in house. I hate subbing things out. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Cause then we're not in control. We don't regulate the time frame. We're on somebody else's time and I hate that. So. Uh, we want to be able to provide that for our customers here quickly and get it and get those jobs in and out and also provide another option for people so when they're here you know if they want to get their wheels powder coated or whatever we're gonna get a decent sized oven so we'll be able to fit some I, I don't know if we'll be able to put a frame in there but at least wheels and some small things to start with so and maybe we'll upgrade to a bigger oven down the road always know when there's an H2 on the dyno because the floor shakes, the walls shake, the garage doors shake, like everything freaking shakes and you feel it like in your chest. I, it's wild, honestly. Our neighbors, they gotta love us. They just, they have to. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Lewis has been busting his booty and uh, the ZX-10R, the shop bike, is almost ready to hit the dyno again. So we got the chain and sprocket all on. We got the kickstand switch, uh, kickstand, let's see, we got the quick shifter. Okay, so we got the quick shifter, the kickstand switch. He's got the throttle body assembly on. Man, I should go in and clean these up. These are good looking a little grungy. These are the old throttle bodies. Remember? Oh, I know. Put the the new ones are the throttle by wire. Yep. Well, these are drive by wire too. They're just, no, but they are no, different. No, there's no cable. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's strictly fly by wire yeah a little different yeah, a little different guys so we'll give you guys yeah i was about to say we'll give you guys a little tip so whenever you're doing a gen 6 swap in a, into a gen 5 uh frame uh or not i guess a gen 5 frame because of the wiring it's really the wiring harness uh the throttle body assembly and the ecu those have to basically match and if you're going to do the throttle body assembly then you have to do the air box as well uh we learned that the air box heights are different on them so some of them don't really fit too well uh, underneath the tanks so anyway just a little tip tip for you guys so it, lewis is at this point we got like i said got throttle body assembly on all the injectors are hooked up we got our grounds on the bike we got fuel lines ran um we have the starter solenoid all ran a starter relay rather starter relay all that wiring is ran upper row of injectors we have the air box that's gonna sit um a few other little odds and ends that we got to do and she'll be running so it's pretty close. It's very, 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 very close to running. I'm very excited to hear it. It should, I don't wanna jinx it, but depending on the load separation, it should have a little bit more of a lope to it, honestly. But we'll see, honestly, it depends on the, depends. Hopefully it makes some freaking power, she better. Nah, she will. I got, just like you, it's I like, I got faith. We did, a, we checked the snot out of this one. 
So we, we really checked uh, all of our measurements. Yeah. We really checked it because we wanted to make sure, again, because we're trying, you know, whenever you try something new, you typically check it a handful of times, more than what you're going to do after you do it a handful of times. So, so Lewis right now is tightening up the header. Oil cooler is all on. We still have oil. We never drained the oil when we pulled the uh, engine out. So it is pretty crazy. I, now thinking about Lewis, do you remember why we did all this in the first place? like pulled the motor back out <laughs> we were like something doesn't look right these are bigger cams they're supposed to make more power 